Hello everyone, hopefully you guys are having a great day. My name is Abraham Leo. Most of you already know me, but for those of you that are new to the channel, then welcome. Welcome to this channel where we do a lot of 3D stuff, 2D stuff, um, a little bit of everything regarding art for video games and films, commercials, and stuff like that. So uh, today we're actually going to be working, or I'm going to be working, I'm going to guide you through my thought process in designing a weapon. Uh, for those of you that are unaware, we launched a our first uh, contest last uh, like two weeks ago, and you have until the end of October, so we still have a little bit of time, like six weeks, I think, to submit your stuff. The submission link is not open yet, but the thing is, or the, the idea is that you guys start working on it, because what you need to do by the end of it is you need to produce a 3D artwork of the weapon that you design. We're not going to grab any concept art from the internet, we're just going to design something um, ourselves. And today I'm going to guide you through that design process. However, if you want, if you guys want to learn a little bit about 3D and you're interested in any of our courses, we do have this very cool Skillshare promotion. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. And there we go. So um, before we jump into this, uh, we need to talk a little bit about like the, the the thought process, right? Like the design process. I would say designing is one of those things that's definitely difficult. It's not super easy to design something that's uh, cool, that's functional, that's like following all of the uh, current uh, media things that we want to see in movies and in games and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to, again, guide you through a couple of like exercises or, or things that I'd like to do to get the, the juices flowing, right? Like the creativity juices flowing. So the first thing we need to, to ask ourselves is, well, what kind of weapon do we want, right? So if we look for weapons, we're going to see that there's a lot of weapons, swords, uh, axes, guns, rocket launchers, uh, grenades even, like technically all of those could be considered a weapon. Even a shield can be used as a weapon, right? Like to bash someone um, uh, like a goblin or something in the head. So the first thing I would do, like whenever whenever you have a big challenge, right? Uh, that's, that's one of the advice that everyone, or that I've heard, I've heard several times um, in regards to like planning and execution. When you have a big challenge, in this case, the, the creation of a weapon, try to divide that into steps. Like, first of all, try to s decide what kind of weapon we want, right? And if you don't know what kind of weapon do you want, try to like compartmentalize that even further. So the first question I'm gonna ask myself is, do I want a melee weapon? Or do I want a ranged weapon? That's going to give me two big groups of weapons that I'm going to be able to decide from. I think in this case, I'm going to go for a melee weapon. Okay, perfect. So we know we're going to have a melee weapon. That means that the character is going to be holding the weapon and he's going to be using that weapon to attack someone else. Now, the next question that I need to ask myself is what kind, I would say, I would say a good question would be like, what kind of weapon do I want? Do I want like fantasy weapon? Do I want like sci-fi weapon? Do I want like a mix of both, like maybe steampunk weapon? Uh, because I don't even know what weapon I'm going to choose, but it might be a good idea to already have something in regards to a style like setup, right? Do I want to go like realistic fantasy? Do I want to go high fantasy? Do I want to go prehistoric maybe or do i want to grab something really really uh like weird or not weird like uh not as common like like a mayan weapon all right so mayans in the, in the mexican culture they had some very cool weapons so maybe i could grab one weapon that existed in the in the real world like this one um is one a, a very common one they used to like get uh, obsidian stones on a on a wooden uh like plank and uh, they were very deadly because obsidian is really, really sharp. So I could do that. You guys could do that. You could grab a weapon from a culture or from a, a tribe or a, um, I don't know, like a place in the world that you find interesting and then give it like a treatment to, to create or to make something a little bit more different. Uh, I actually don't think that's a bad idea, to be honest. Like uh, maybe I can go with this. Now, I do want to do something that I'm not as comfortable with, and that's another advice I could give you. 
sometimes it's a good idea to try to go out of your comfort zone. Not always. The comfort zone is a good place to be. That's why it's called a comfort zone, right? So if you are the guy who's known for doing specific things, then you want your work to be related to that thing because you know that you're going to be able to deliver at the best uh, possible uh, quality. But the, the, the going out of your comfort zone, it's an excellent way to expand your horizons and, and become a little bit more proficient in other things. And this kind of contest, for instance, I always found them to be really, really helpful in that regard, because even if you don't do weapons that much, then you're going to be practicing something that you're not uh, as familiar with. So, uh, okay, so this is a weapon. Let's let's say we're going to grab this weapon right here as, a, as, our, um, as our source of inspiration. So I'm going to just copy this guy. And right now here in, in Photoshop, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have it right here. Again, this is going to be the base. Now, this does not mean that I'm going to be doing this specific weapon and just reimagining it. No, no, no. We, we can do like crazy things with this, um, but we're going to be doing, again, something like a little bit more like interesting. So the next thing I need to ask myself is how am I going to use this weapon? Like what kind of weapon do I want to do? And if I look for weapon melee... I'm going to see all of the different weapons that exist. So we have, again, axes, scythes, uh, maces, uh, long swords, uh, halberds, uh, hammers. Like, there are so, so many uh, weapon scimitars. And what's fun about this is that we can actually grab something or some sort of weapon that we might like and say, hey, what if we have, for instance, a sword made out of obsidian? That looks interesting. That could be an interesting concept, right? What if we have an axe made out of obsidian? I know you can't have an axe because the obsidian is actually quite fragile. So that's why it has like small things. But we could have an axe-shaped weapon. And instead of being steel on the edge, it could be obsidian, right? That's the kind of questions that you need to ask yourself. Now, uh, there's two very different uh, schools of thoughts uh, of thought in regards to the functionality of weapons. Some uh, like uh, designers go for the cool factor, I would say, which is what makes a, a weapon look cool, and we go with that. And some other guys go with this sort of um, a functional factor, right? Like it needs to work. If it doesn't work, then it, it's not uh, useful. Um, a perfect example I can give you is like uh, in Cena Blade. I've just been playing Cena Blade a lot. And uh, there's some weapons. Let me just make sure that I'm not spoiling any guy or anyone. Uh, okay, so uh, this guy, this, this is not a spoiler. So uh, this guy's right here. This is the, the image that they're gonna be using for the, or that they're using for the DLC. And these are the swords of the main characters, right? From one, two, and three. And if you look at them, I think they look cool. Some might think that they look a little bit too much, like it's a little bit too much. But one thing I know is that they're not functional. <laughs> Maybe this one right here, because it has like a very sharp edge. This one right here that also has a like semi-sharp edge. But I wouldn't call these guys functional, right? They're sci-fi-ish. They go into like the fantasy land of things, but they look cool. And then if we compare that to something like the Witcher, right? We look for Witcher 3 weapons. You're going to see that most weapons in The Witcher are really, really, really like similar, right? Like most of them are just like a super simple. The only thing that changes is maybe the pommel. And you can see most of them are functional. So it, it has value. Having a functional weapon has value. Um, but again, here we're in the point where we can like, explore and play around a little bit with shapes and stuff. So let's decide on a uh, type of weapon. Now that we know the difference between cool or what could be cool and whatnot. Let's decide on a type of weapon. And again, just look at the like the basic, any sort of like these things and, and think about what, what kind of weapon might be a, an interesting one. I think a sword, like swords are always fun. And I think a sword might be, might be interesting. I'm also inclined to do like an ax, uh, but I think I've done axes before. Uh, I just saw this gloves right there, like having obsidian like claws. That could also be pretty, pretty cool. The design process might be a little bit more complicated because uh, it's not like a flat surface. It's more like a glob sort of thing. But that could work as well. Should we do that? I think I think that could be a good idea. Let's see. What else do we have? I think for simplicity's sake, for, for, for today's uh, video, I might go with something a little bit more traditional but I actually like if I wanted if I was participating in the contest I think I would probably go for like an obsidian sort of claw uh, thing so let's go then for a scimitar I think a scimitar is a very very cool weapon I've always liked that sort of like curved edge to the scimitars and the, again there's no need to specifically select one scimitar you can just grab one as an inspiration 
and then we're going to be exploring. OK, so let's copy that there and have this as an, as an, so as an, as an example. So we have the weapon type. We have the weapon inspiration, which is going to be this uh, Mayan um, thing. I don't remember the name of this weapon, uh, to be honest. But we have this guy right here, which is going to be our inspiration. And now I would probably go into the design stage. But I'm not just going to start drawing and sketching stuff, because I know if I do that, what's going to happen is my brain is only going to grab whatever information I have in my head right now, and it's going to try to implement that into the, into the designs. So one of the best things we can do as, as designers is get ourselves like immersed in the in the concepts and in the reference so that we find a specific language that we want to transmit in our designs. What do I mean by this? If I tell you guys, give me a like a gladiator helmet, everyone's probably going to be doing the one that I <laughs> that I, I did for the what's the word for the course, right? Which is like this sort of like gladiator with little holes, something like like this. Right. Or the Maximus, uh, like the glider from from the gladiator movie. Right. Which is like this sort of like tiger. I can't even draw it right now. But those are like the main ones that you think you might even think about the Spartan helmet. But if you look for, again, like a gladiator helmet, you're going to see that there was actually quite a bit of variation. But unless you were an expert at gladiator history, it would be pretty much impossible for your brain to have that information. So so that's why it's super important. See, like this is the first thing that Google shows you. The, the one with the little round things and the one from the movie. Uh, but again, if we keep looking, you're going to see like this one looks like an orc. Pretty cool. This one looks pretty nice as well. Um, this one, a little bit different, right? Might not be historically accurate, but it's, uh, it's something interesting. This one, again, a little bit different. And, and that's how you learn about this sort of stuff. Like that's how you grow as an artist because you're, you're studying, you're doing this research phase for your own stuff. Now, I'm not going to be doing a research for scimitars because that, that shape we're going to be uh, playing around with uh, in just a second. I actually want to do research for like, like the style that I want to go for. So if I'm going to be doing a Mayan style scimitar, then I need to look for Mayan art. And, um, and I'm going to start finding certain things, certain patterns that arise when I start analyzing the kind of art that Mayans had. Uh, Mayans are in the southern part of Mexico, by the way, for those of you that are not uh, aware of it. And uh, and they had some pretty cool stuff. They had some pretty cool mythology and everything. And one of the things that I noticed is they have big shapes, right? Like if we take a look at the art in general, they have thick, big lines. It's relatively flat. There's a lot of carving. They did a lot of carving. It's quite like decorated. There's a lot of stuff going on on their stuff. It's not minimalistic. Um, like I would say maybe like the Greeks and the Romans had like stuff that was a little bit more stylized or like, uh, not as, uh, not as, um, what's the word, compressed with message and meaning. So, okay, cool. We know we're going to have to go for, for some sort of like carving stuff. But that, again, that doesn't mean that we need to stop there because that, that's one of the very common mistakes that a lot of people make. They just grab something, they're like, okay, I'm just going to do. And what you end up with is a scimitar that looks Mayan and, and that's it. But that's, I wouldn't say that's as, as original, right? Like the design might be like accurate if it were like part of the of the Mayan culture, but it's not going to be as, as original. So we need to add more layers to this. And the next layer that I'm going to add, this is where the, where the cool factor comes into place. The next layer that I'm going to add is I'm going to add the artistic inspiration. Like what kind, how, how am I going to transform all of the pieces that I have right here into something that's a little bit more, you know, interesting, more, um, more, more so that represents the kind of like weapon or thing that I want to create. And the, the best way I can tell you uh, how to develop this sort of thing, stuff is again, to grab a game or a movie or a series that you like, and you're like, this guy's really nailed the design. Like, I really like what they did here. I want to use that again as an inspiration. We're never going to be copying things. That's plagiarism. And that's of course, really, really wrong, but we can definitely use it as inspiration. So for instance, in Zelda, Breath of the Wild, which has a very, um, very, again, like tribal antique kind of look thing. They also have these weapons and the guardian weapons, the ancient weapons, they do remind me of this sort of lost into time or lost in time thing. There we go. So it's like, okay, I like this design. This is the kind of stuff that, that I think could be incorporated in one way or another into my, uh, into my elements. Right. So I'm just going to grab, we have like a, 
I was wondering if we had like a like all of them in one same page. Like, yeah, this guy's right here. So copy and we copy this right here. Again, we're not going to copy those specific concepts. We're just going to use them as inspiration. But that's the kind of stuff that I'm uh, like thinking about. Then we need to decide, uh, I would say another important part is uh, we need to decide the kind of uh, game that we're going to go for in this case, if we're going to be doing this for a game. Is it going to be like a stylized, minimalistic game where things are really like low poly and flat? Or are we going to go for the super hi-fi or sci-fi stuff? I think I want to go a little bit like higher on, on the poly count. So again, trying to think about the games that have that sort of stuff. I mean, World of Warcraft, of, of course, comes into play. They have a lot of detail in their textures. Um, Xenoblade, as I just mentioned, Final Fantasy, trying to think if there's another one. Monster Hunter, that's a great one. Monster Hunter, great sword. Which, as you can see, I'm, I'm using games that I know. Uh, th this is where, uh, in a studio, it's also quite important to to have like people like bouncing or the ideas around because I've been exposed to certain types of games and certain types of styles. You guys have been exposed to other types of styles. So if you give me comments or, or like suggestions in the comments, that's the kind of stuff that bounces things around. They're like, hey, have you played this game? Have you played this other game? And then you you watch that, you research those, and you're like, oh, that's cool as well. Let me incorporate that into my designs. So for instance, this one right here, this re looks really, really close to, to what I'm like imagining for my for my design. There we go. So we have our base inspiration, our weapon, our cultural inspiration, if you wish, our design inspiration with like, a, um, again, a Breath of the Wild and, uh, and Monster Hunter. And now that we have this, now it's time to start like pouring out ideas. This method that I'm going to show you is what I call the, uh, well, it's not that I call it, it's just like a uh, it's like a garbage method, uh, but not garbage because it's bad garbage because it's going to look like garbage, but then we're going to be able to grab stuff from there. I've seen so many method methods. Some people just have the idea and then just uh, like trace it on, on, on top of whatever they're uh, they're going for. Uh, some other people need a little bit more time to, what's the word, to to get the, the idea going and to find something that they like. I hate the new, I hate the new Windows 11 bar for some reason it doesn't like hiding it's a discord oh there we go it was discord <laughs> okay so uh again as i mentioned some people like get the idea and they just like sketch it out and that's the final draft and that's it i i'm not one of those guys i i like to especially when i'm doing this sort of stuff i like to have and, and filter out a lot of the stuff what do i mean by filter out whenever you start designing something your mind is immediately gonna go to something and be like dude dude i know what you want i know exactly what you want and my mind right now is telling me this is what you want you want like a like a scimitar like a curved scimitar and it's gonna have like this a uh, blocky edges and then you're gonna have like the blocky obsidian things right here on the on the other edge, like that. And then on the pommel, it's gonna be like a like a really interesting and carved out pommel. That's what my brain is telling me. And a lot of people go with this first idea. They're like, yeah, that's it. That's the idea that I want. And the problem with doing that, it's not that you're not gonna generate a good thing. The problem is you didn't explore enough. You don't have enough options. So since you didn't explore, you don't know if you could have found something that was a little bit more interesting. So again, the uh, like the the sketching or the or the garbage uh, technique is just like do random gibberish, like literally random gibberish. In this case, of course, with the shape of a, of a sword, right? Like a, some sort of like silhouette, like this. Just random gibberish here, random gibberish here, random stuff over here, and there we go. As you can see, those are just four sketches. Took me ten seconds to do them, and now what I can do is I can, in this case, create a new layer. I'm going to lower the opacity with this new layer. And now I'm going to go to each one of them and try to look for shapes, things that look interesting, things that make me um, excited about the shape or the form. For instance, on this one, I really like, let's go to this one. I really like this sort of like curvature right there. And then maybe we can go like this, kind of like having a hook right there, for instance. And then like another hook right there. Okay. So now we've created a new blade that I didn't originally think about, right? This this was not in my brain. But thanks to this, uh, again, generation of just like noise, I'm able to create and, and, and find something a little bit more interesting. Like maybe we have like a really big blade right here, a curve here, curve here. And then another blade right here, again, kind of like a, like a big hook. And that's going to be another blade. 
this one, this one's like a fat blade over here. And then we go like this, actually. Like this. Kind of looks like a short sword rather than a than a scimitar, but that's fine. Like that's another thing that could work. It might not work, it might look horrible, but it could work as well, right? Let's go over here. I like that curve right there. And that's it, right? So that's four. And I would probably do like 10 or 20 or or 40 because as you saw, it just took me what, like two, three minutes to get something uh, going that might look interesting. And and that's the exploration ideas. My, uh, my partner uh, at the studio, his name is uh, Ulysses. Uh, he has been in the industry for a long time, but he's been more focused on the um, marketing and uh, and the development of ideas. He's not a 3D artist. Um, he's older than me, by the way. He's uh, I'm not sure how old he is, to be honest, but he's older. He has like 25 years of experience or 28 years of experience on the industry. Um, and um, and he uses this idea. He's like the first, he, or he he uses this statement. He says the first idea that you have is gonna be, it's gonna suck. Like it's not gonna be the best idea. The second one that you have is also not gonna be the best idea. It's not until you keep exploring and you find more that you're gonna be able to find something that works. <laughs> Give me just one second, guys. It's allergy seasons over here, and you guys know how how crazy this gets. So as I was saying, um, the first couple of ideas that you might have might not be the best ideas you will have. So, so that's why it's very important that we continuously um, like uh, think about how to improve our, our stuff. Now, uh, scimitars, they, ha they have the screw dash, right? And they're supposed to be used for slicing. Uh, however, uh, obsidian, as I've mentioned before, is not as resistant. So you can't have like a huge stuff. And, but again, here's where like fantasy land comes into play and you can be like, my stone, it's not obsidian, it's um, uh, obsidian knight, right? It's going to be like a variation of obsidian that's strong enough so that you can have a full blade made out of it. Okay, cool. I mean, if that's what you want to do for your game or your video or your movie, you're, you're free to do so. No one's going to criticize you, right? Um... So now that we have something that's uh, interesting, now we need to go into the into the sketching side of things. So again, if I were doing this like for uh, if I was competing, I would probably do this like three or four or five more times. But since I'm not, uh, I think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my two favorite ones, which is uh, this one right here, the second one that we did, and uh, I really like this one as well. I don't like this one because it's a little bit short and kind of like chubby and that uh, this one reminds me a little bit too much about another weapon that i don't remember where i exactly saw it kind of reminds me of the orcs weapon from lord of the rings that has like the little triangle on the top so so i'm gonna go for something like uh, like this now i'm gonna refine this because again this doesn't mean that this exact idea is the one that i'm gonna be using first of all i don't want sharp edges um if you take a look at the original like uh, inspiration that we have there's no sharp edges, like a very blunt weapon same for this sort of stuff and same for like the guardian stuff so i don't want those pointy edges so i'm gonna have my main like um sharp edge right here we're gonna have a sharp edge on the top and i don't mind having the curvature here on the on the side like this that's fine we're gonna go really really down i do like having that hook I think a hook right there is a, is a nice idea, but then I'm gonna like kill the hook with a with a straight line like this. Same deal. I don't want a a pointy end right there, so I'd rather have like a square point, square point right there, and we keep going. Something like that looks okay. Let's take a look at the symmetry. Usually the symmetry kind of like goes in. So something like this. That would be the blade of the symmetry, right? Let's focus on the blade for now. Um, oh, a big mistake here. <laughs> I uh, drew the the thing on the on the top on the bottom layer. That's fine. Let me just very quickly clean this up. There we go. That's it. So that's the general like rough shape of what I want. Now I need to decide what's it gonna be made of. I know I want the obsidian on the border. That's a, that's a given. Like that's a, that, that's something that we're taking from this design right here. I probably do want the obsidian pieces to be in a specific shape, like this sort of like house thingy or something. 
So I know that we're going to have the obsidian things right here. Maybe this side right here could be like another like obsidian thing. I'm not sure yet. I have one there. As you can see, the, the size of the obsidian pieces that I'm using, it's like relatively big. So that immediately tells me that this guy is probably going to be a little bit more stylized or it's going to be going into the stylized realm. Uh, so it's not going to be as realistic, of course. And there we go. Um, let's see, what else? Taking into account the the uh, the Mayan uh, calendar, or this thing right here. Oh my God, I'm about to sneeze and I hate when that happens. There's a lot of borders, right? Like everything is like a, like a border. So I would expect there to be a border here on the line, probably another one right here, and probably another one going to the back like this. Oh my God. Give me just one second, guys. And there we go. So I had to go get my medicine, because otherwise I was going to be sneezing uh, for a long, long time. Did I just... Oh. I did this. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to grab this layer, bring it all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to press Ctrl E, and now everything's on the, on the bottom layer. There we go. So what I want to do now is, now that we have this interesting design, I'm going to scale it down, and uh, it might be a good idea to start cleaning it up, right? Uh, and this is where a lot of people struggle when designing things. Once you find something that works, they have a hard time making sure it just, like, completely works, right? Uh, and, and you need to, to be very, very critical of yourself to make sure that you are doing things in the best possible way. What do I mean by this? Well, if I see that something is not looking as nice as I want, this is the perfect time to, uh, to just like uh, remove it, right? So for instance, this hook right here, I'm not particularly fond of it because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like it's not it's not going to be very common for someone to go all the way there and, and cut with that specific element. So it might be a good idea to uh, maybe just like complete the sword in this case. We could leave the, the hook there as... Um... Did I change the brush? There we go. It could make sense to, to add like some sort of like motif, for instance. Like I'm not, I'm not against uh, changing things there so that they look a little bit different. So we could keep the motif there, right? Like that sort of like hook, but that would be on the design itself, like the, on the inner design of the of the element. I'm definitely gonna have like a room, well not runes, there were not runes, but like some decorations and stuff going on here. But let's focus on the pommel now, because I think the pommel is another important part. And the scimitar, they're the sort of like roundish uh, pommels to, to conform with the hand. That's something that I definitely want. So I'm gonna have this sort of like curved pommel right here. And um, on the on the guard itself, as you can see, there was no like hand guard on the on the on the Mayan uh, weapon. We do have this one here. That's usually for when two like swords clash and they slide, or if they were to slide, it protects your hand, right? And you don't get <laughs> your hand cut off. So I think it might be a good like design idea to, to incorporate that. So we're gonna have some sort of like hand guard design over here. Same deal, like we're gonna go for this sort of like squarish uh, motif in general, like this. And then we're gonna have the handle itself. If we can again add like patterns and runes and stuff. And then the, the pommel, which is like the, the counterweight, right? For the counterweight, I'm thinking about adding like a, like a little Mayan head or something. I think that'd be interesting. And there we go. So we have this. We like it, right? I, I think it looks okay. It's a nice design. It has potential. But this is, again, this is, should not end here. Because if we just go with this, we are, we're um, removing ourselves or we're, we're getting rid of the opportunity to explore more and find other interesting things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this to the side, duplicate it, let's say, three times. And then let's do changes. Like, what kind of changes am I, am I thinking of? Well, what if, for instance, we change the shape of the blade? Here's where digital tools are really good because they allow you for quick uh, iterations. For instance, here, I can press uh, Control uh, T to go into transform mode, and I can go into like skew. And I can just start moving things around, for instance, or I can go into uh, warp. 
which is going to give me this sort of like like element and as you can see i can can just play around look at that shape that looks even more interesting right like a like a more curved things of course we're going to have to to fix elements to to fix uh things here and there but as you can see we get a really really interesting design without that much of a problem let's do the same thing on this one let's go here control t to go into transform mode let's go into warp and we can warp this thing for instance let's go for like a broadsword sort of approach kind of more like a like a mallet like a hatchet something like that that looks interesting there we go so now we have this and of course we're gonna have to go back to the sketch and fix certain things for instance i know that uh i know that the this obsidian pieces are gonna have to be rebuilt pretty much same for this one because we don't want the the distortion let's bring this lower so i know we're gonna have like the little blocks right here following the curvature this one looks a lot more like symmetry this more looks more like a I don't know, like a glaive or something. So again, we find things, we explore with things, and we play around and see what works and what doesn't. For instance, I really like the fact that these things right here are aligned. So it might not be a bad idea to really push this to the back and create the hook. Remember the hook that we talked about? But maybe the hook's going to be over here on the back. It kind of reminds me of a, of a snake. Uh, this this one right here, the middle one, and uh, in the Mayan mythology, there's this uh, god called um, uh, Quetzalcoatl, and Quetzalcoatl is this uh, like winged serpent god, right? Quetzalcoatl. There we go. So the winged serpent. So it has a little bit of motif even. We we can go with that. We can we can play around with that sort of stuff. Now I am. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because whenever I teach this class uh, to my Mexican students. We always go for a different culture than Mexicans because we Mexicans, and I think that's like like basic, right? Like you go with the culture that you know the most. So when we try to create something new, we go for Mayans and Aztecs and stuff like that. Um, but now that I'm teaching to a more international audience, I'm going back to Mayans because it's kind of like representative. But again, we could have done this with like Maori. We can go with uh, like Native Americans. We can do with with Inuits. We could go with Celtics or Celts. We can do uh, like African like. Um, the, the best thing I can do, uh, advise you there is, of course, do your, your research like properly. You don't want to be doing things that could get you canceled. So uh, always be respectful of the cultures that you're uh, like, like gathering stuff from. So here, again, we're going to go for, like, I like this. Like, it kind of looks like a, like a snake trying to bite. But again, now, we, now that we have a concept, I really like this concept. Now we can start going and in cleaning up certain things, right? So I'm actually going to create a new document. And then I'm going to grab uh, this one right here, control C, and then just control B so that we can clean things up on this document. What do I mean by clean up? We're not concept artists, or at least I'm not a concept artist. So I don't, and, and you guys don't have to, um, to, to send or, or submit a, a completely like a clean uh, version of your element. Uh, but it is a good idea to think about like the graphic shapes that we're, uh, that we're going for. And for instance, I know that the main shape is, of course, this curvature, which I really like. I like the fact, again, that the fangs here or the curvature here is aligned. But here, it, it might not be a bad idea to... I kind of like this thing like flaring out a little bit, like this area right here being thicker than this inner area right there. That's a, that's a good idea. But like this one right here, like on this particular uh, like corner, if we're going to go in and then down and then in again, I do want this part right here and this part right here to be aligned so that again, so that things just flow in a better way. And then this will flow. Because remember, usually a sword, it actually goes all the way to the pommel, like the, the metal will continue all the way here um, so it doesn't break, right? So we're gonna have this break here, which I would say it's probably not functional because it might make the, the blade weaker. Uh, we still need to, to take into account that this thing is gonna go and flow into the pommel itself. So this is the general silhouette. And this is a very common trick. You just grab a layer and you make it like thinner and thinner on the on the opacity. Uh, that way you just clean things up. And I've seen concept artists do this like two, three, four times, as many times as they need until they clean the, the concept as, as nicely as possible. There we go. So I know that we do want, we mentioned this, the sort of like line going into the element like this. 
there's probably gonna be like if we have a serpent here, it might not be a bad idea to give it like the like a serpent look, serpent motif, and have like some carvings in here as well along the, the side of the blade. I'm still debating whether I want this to be wooden or um whether I want this to be like metal. I think following the original concept, wood might be a good idea. We're gonna have our obsidian stones like right about here so as you can see this is going into more like a fantasy like mayan setting right like imagine like a medieval mayan society uh where they weren't exterminated by the conquerors and uh and they develop into this sort of like interesting fantasy effect still need to design the pommel again i i know that on the back here it's probably gonna be like a like a little face or like a little head uh, now, if we're following this sort of like a, a winged serpent motif, like a winged pommel, might not be a bad idea, right? You know, something to, to play around with. Uh, but that's it, guys. As you can see, like, uh, we, we went from, from a, a, a well, I, it, was, it was quite a journey, right? Starting with like a, oh, let's go over here. So we go, hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, of course. So we got A and then B, C, D options. And then we eliminated a couple of these ones we didn't like. And then we like added this and the result was this. And then we got like A, B and C again. And, and that's the exploration. Imagine if we've had stuck with the original one, which is this one. Again, that was the, uh, the initial idea that my brain has like, yeah, just do this. This is going to look cool. Yeah, I don't think it's going to look bad. It might be a good weapon, but we don't give ourselves the chance to really explore again other options. And I guess that's the that's the final message that I want to send with this video. I know we went a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully this is useful for all of, uh, all of you guys that struggle with uh, the creative process. My best advice, create variations. Just create different variations. Grab things that you like from one, from the other. Make sure things work one way or another gather your reference, study the subject, go for interesting things. And once you have that, you're going to be able to get to an interesting concept that once we convert this into 3D, we'll be able to um, to, to generate quite nicely. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue with this weapon, by the way. As I mentioned, I'm going to try to do one video weekly until the end of the of the submission contest. So next time, we're probably going to do a blocking um, in, in ZBrush, probably, so that we or so that you guys get an idea of my, uh, again, my production process. And at the end, I'll present my weapon. You guys can work along with me and, uh, of course, do your own concept because you need to submit your own concept for your own uh, submission. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. Leave a like, share, comment. You know the drill. I'll see you back on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.